Hi everyone, I'm Gertie. I am here um, taking over the Michael Miller Instagram account. <laughs> and I'm here with my lovely assistant designer for Charm Patterns, Malisha Richter. Hi everyone. So Malisha will be here um, obviously holding the phone, but also taking your questions. So I'm gonna talk for a little bit and if you have any burning questions about fabric design, sewing pattern design, my pets, anything within reason. Type it into um, the little message box and at the end of the video, we'll have some time for questions. So um, I'm thrilled to be here today taking over the Michael Miller account. This is my second collection with Michael Miller that I have coming up. So I wanted to give you a little sneak peek and take this opportunity to kind of take you behind the scenes at my studio. Um, if you don't know me, I also design sewing patterns and write sewing books. So um, I have a studio here in Newburgh, New York, um, which is in the beautiful Hudson Valley. And um, I'm gonna take you sort of behind the scenes today so that you can see some of the new fabrics. And I also wanna show you some of the dresses that I have been making these fabrics in. So one of the great things about being a licensed designer with Michael Miller is that they send you a whole bolt of each fabric that you design. So if you love to sew as much as we do here, that's always really exciting because we get all this fabric. We get a huge shipment and then we get to think about what we're gonna do with it and how we're gonna promote the designs and um, samples that we can sew so that you can see the fabric in a project. Now, I am not a quilter. <laughs> Probably some of you, if you're coming to this through Michael Miller and you don't really know me, um, you might be quilters. I am not a quilter, but I have the utmost respect for quilters, especially my mother. Shout out to my mom, who is an amazing quilter. I just never really got the quilting bug, but I am a huge sewing addict and I love sewing garments. So I design um, all 50s and 40s inspired dress patterns. So I use these patterns, I use these fabrics the way that I know how to do best, and that is to make dresses. <laughs> so that's what I do, but the folks at Michael Miller always help me out because they are a quilting company. So they help me out by having a quilt designer make some designs for my lines, which I always really appreciate because as I told them at the beginning, um, I've never made a quilt in my life and I respect and love that you're a quilting company, but I don't know how to do that. And they said, oh, that's no problem. We will help you. So I, um, I'm always really lucky to be able to get to see my designs in quilts um, made by other designers. But I'm gonna show you what I do, which is make dresses. So let me tell you a little bit about the line that's coming out. It is called Boudoir by Gertie. And the inspiration behind it is, um, the best way I can describe it is if you are a little girl and you have a glamorous grandmother, which I did, um, who has a beautiful vanity with lots of beautiful things sort of hidden away in it that seems slightly forbidden and very like mysterious and womanly and feminine, and you always admired this grandmother, this is, so that's sort of the inspiration behind this collection. So you'll see lots of things like hand fans and roses and feathers and perfume bottles and strings of pearls and uh, lace <laughs> and <laughs> sorts of things like that. So sort of like a glamorous um, older woman that you admire, what does she have on her vanity and what sort of like, um, how that's sort of like an aspiration of, of femininity when you're a little girl. So um, I did have a grandmother that I felt was exceptionally glamorous and I remember going through her drawers when I was really little and seeing all the little like hankies and like chocolates and like all things that she had hidden in there. And um, so she was a big inspiration for this collection. And let me just dive right in and talk about the dress that I'm wearing. It is called the Night and Day Dress is the pattern. Um, and it is from our sewing pattern company called Charm Patterns. And this is the Charm Pattern Studio. So we design um, 50s inspired, mostly dress patterns. And this particular pattern has 70, 72 different options. So it has like two different bodices, six different sleeves, two collars, and three skirts. So that adds up to a ton of different options. So I've just made one of the possible variations in this new fan print. And you know, going back to the idea of the glamorous older woman, um, my grandmother gave me some hand fans and one of them I have at home, I, I love it so much, I wish I brought it in today because it's still in the original little cardboard box 
and it says on the side, it says, keep cool and be gay, which I always <laughs> loved. And it's in the original box. And I just always loved hand fans. And um, I always, always, always wanted to do a fan print. So that is what this became. And of course, I had to add, add roses. If you saw my post this morning, you know that I love, love, love anything rose print. So this is the fan print. This was also directly inspired by a 40s textile that um, I had pictures of. So it was like a really beautiful rayon fabric. And we, um, you know, me and the team at Michael Miller, who are amazing, they helped me work this into this fan print. And it also comes in black. Maybe we should get to this stack later because I'm going to knock this over. Okay, <laughs> so let me just go through the dresses on the forms and then we'll look through this little stack right here. So this is the fan print. And this one, oh, by the way, it's always really fun to name the fabrics. So this one is called Temptress. Okay, let's look at this dress right here. This is called the popover dress. The pattern is the popover dress. And it is in my new book, Gertie Sews Jiffy Dresses. So if you're new to dressmaking and vintage inspired dressmaking, this is the book for you. It's all um, dresses that you can make in a day and keep it really simple and easy. And this particular dress, um, it's called popover because it doesn't have a zipper or anything. You just pop it over your head and it looks kind of like a tent when you put it on. And then you put on one of these little elastic cinch belts from Amazon and you get this great fit and flare silhouette. And of course it has pockets and these cute little shoulder bows right here. And this is one of the, um, the florals in the collection. And I can't remember what the, the name of this one is, sadly. Oh, well, we'll find that later. But this is like a little ribbon um, and little bouquet design. So one of the challenges in designing a quilting cotton collection like this is that we always need to have a wide range of scale in the prints. So if it were up to just me, everything would be enormous florals, <laughs> but that does not make a good collection. So especially for quilters, so I'm sure if you're a quilter, you will appreciate what I'm saying, that you need to have a good mix of large scale prints, medium scale prints, and then very small scale prints to make a good quilt. So this is an example of one of the medium scale prints. And it comes in a couple different colors as well, but we'll talk, we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> okay, so the third dress I have on display here is the one on this form here. And I also posted this um, in the Michael Miller feed today. This is called the boat neck dress. And it's also from that new book, Gertie Sews Jiffy Dresses. And it go, it's a little bit more um, advanced. Uh, the, the book takes you from very easy dresses up to slightly more advanced. And this one has a very pretty low back and a lap zipper. And one of the things I love about this print is that you can't see on first inspection from far away, but once you get close, you can see that these are tonal feathers. So red on red feathers. I also love feather prints. That's just sort of a little thing I've always loved. So fans, feathers, lace, roses, I love all that stuff. And this print incorporates all of those things. So. If this is a border print. I love sewing with border prints. So if you're unfamiliar with that term, it just means when you have a print that is oriented along the selvage of a fabric. So it's great for gathered skirts like this because this, this skirt is essentially a rectangle and then you gather it up at the top. So you can really take advantage of a border like that. We also took advantage of the border on the neckline. So that's the upside down border placed around the neckline just to give a really pretty sort of like almost like necklace effect on the bodice. And this, these little sleeves are a great opportunity to also use the border again, having that um, sort of echoing that lace motif. So that is the boat neck dress and that is the border print. So like I said, I love border prints. I always have to do at least one in every collection. So let's talk a little bit about what's these goodies that are on the shelf right here. I did wanna show you out a couple of these to, to show you. This particular print is called, see now I want to tell you the names, Eau de Parfume. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember one of the first things that we, uh, the first names that we threw around for this was Eau de Toilette and I was like, oh it sounds too much like toilet, so we can't have that in the name. Um, this is a beautiful perfume bottle print and so going back to the idea of your, your grandma's vanity, this 
this is it. This is a beautiful illustrated um, little perfume bottles. And I remember my, my grandmother and my mother too wearing Shalimar and I always thought that was very glamorous. So I think this kind of echoes the Shalimar bottle. And of course it has little roses on it too. And this print also comes in a red background and a black background. So if white is not your thing, maybe one of those will be. Okay, so let me put this up here. And then this print is really something different than I have ever done before. I'm very excited about it. This one is called Pingmoir. It's like, do you like how I can't pronounce any French words with this entire <laughs> collection is named after French things? So, sorry about that. I'm a dumb American. Um, I do my best. Um, this is a really cool illustrated print. And when I came up with this idea, I remember I was going through this thing where I felt like all of my designs were too cute and didn't have enough of an edge to them. <laughs> and so I wanted to introduce some slightly racy elements into my designs. And you can see there's sort of like a, a long black glove there and an eye mask and interpret that how you will, a feather. And I love these lipstick prints. And then the locket actually um, brings in our logo at Charm Patterns with the little heart locket. The hand fan right there, roses. And then it's all on a blush pink background with a white spiderweb design on it. I love spiderwebs and I did, if you saw my, my recent post for Michael Miller this morning, I did do a spiderweb and rose print last year called Kiss of the Spider Woman. <laughs> And um, that was probably the most popular print in the collection. So we wanted to kind of echo that in a subtle way. So this print also comes on a white background. And then I just wanted to show you some other colorways. This is the same fabric that I'm wearing, but in a black colorway. And you can see that the roses are still pink, but they're a slightly more like dusty rose pink rather than the bubblegum pink on the red. I've done a lot of black backgrounds in my day and I love black backgrounds, but I was really excited to branch out into red. I've always, always, always wanted to do a cherry red background with bubblegum pink roses. So that's kind of how we came to this red colorway. So I'm really excited about it. But of course, I love wearing black and I love wearing black florals. So I think it's nice to have both options. Okay, let's put this down here. And then I just wanted to show you the border print in this other option as well in the black colorway. So you can see the fans are a little more pronounced on this one because they're gray on black and then these beautiful pink roses, and then the lace border. So I, I'm really excited to sew with this one and also with the black fan. So I do, the last thing I wanna show you before maybe getting to some questions is some of the other options up here. Can you just kind of take them to the, <laughs> Malisha, take them for a walk to the sewing <laughs> unit. Um, we have some all over lace prints down here in three different colors. Oh, we actually, we have five different colors on that one. Um, that's a great mixer. And then there's a pearl necklace inspired print up there in black and white. And then if you kind of scan over here, sorry, I covered these up, but um, you can see there's that bow and flower uh, print in three different colors. There's a blush background, which I really like on that one. And then if you can just kind of show them the top shelf up there, Malisha, there are the two other perfume colors and there is the other uh, spider web and sort of illustrated design up there. So that's everything. <laughs> Thank you, Alicia. Right. Does anyone have any questions? There aren't any questions. I don't see any questions. People, come on. <laughs> if you have any questions, ask now. <laughs> Type in your comments. Um, is there anything else we can tell them? Hmm. Um, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Hattie, do you want to come be in the video? Hattie, come.
Good girl. <laughs> Good girl, come here. Lift up. <laughs> you go so Daddy, stay. <laughs> okay. You might have seen my cat this morning in the last post I did. This is my dog, Hattie. Hattie, say hi to the nice people. You're on live TV, Hattie. <laughs> <laughs> so Hattie comes to work with me every day. And um, she is a little Chihuahua rescue. And she's been with me for like three years, but she's now 11. So she had a whole life before being with me that we have no idea what it is. She's a very, she's a woman with a mysterious past. And um, she comes to work every day. This is an, so our studio is in this amazing, um, I'm just gonna say community of makers for, <laughs> for lack of a less annoying term. Um, lots of interesting business owners in this building and artisans and artists, and a lot of them have dogs and we all bring our dogs to work and it's just a really great environment. And so Hattie just hangs out here with us all day and she, uh, she barks when she hears other dogs going by. And uh, that's the life of Hattie. <laughs> Someone wants to know about the fabric content. They are all 100% cotton. So they are all... Um, bye, Hattie. <laughs> your, your moment of fame. Is <laughs> um, <laughs> they're all 100% cotton, and they are all on Michael Miller's quilting cotton. So I know that when I started um, making garments... A long time ago now um, I was told to and I've even told people this myself so I now have to kind of eat my words a little bit I told people that you should never use quilting cottons for garments and I feel like the quality of quilting cottons has changed quite a bit and has a really nice drape to it and they all wash really well too so I love wearing cotton so these are um, great for summer dresses and as you can see all I do with these, these cottons is make dresses out of them. So I stand by it 100% as a garment fabric as well. Um, oh, I do want to say to quilters, there is a really, um, there are two really cute quilt patterns that uh, Michael Miller produced along with this line. One is actually a quilt of a little dress on a dress form, which is so cute. And the other one has like little shoes and sunglasses. It's really adorable. and. Um, I feel like it's great, especially as a gift for a girl of any age, let's say. But um, I'm very excited because my mom is an avid quilter, like I said, and she is looking forward to, forward to quilting those. So I always request quilts from her, and so she might be getting a request for that one from me. But they're also selling a kit for, for one of them too, which I know always makes things a little easier rather than buying all the yardage yourself. And Lillian wants to know your creative process from coming up with an idea to seeing the designs printed on the fabric. Okay, so my process is that I usually, well, I always collect vintage dresses. I'm sure that comes as a shock. Vintage dresses and vintage textiles, and I usually have a lot of ideas going for collections. So, for instance, um, these all kind of came together under this boudoir theme, but I've been collecting these ideas for years now and just kind of seeing how they can shape up into a collection. So when I work with Michael Miller, um, they're great because they have, I'm a pattern maker and an author, but um, I do not know how to make a pattern repeat to save my life. And they are amazing because they have a whole team there and they um, are very gracious to me in helping me put them together into these fabric designs. So we start with an idea. And in this case, um, I was throwing around some of the things I had been wanting to do for a long time, like the fans, like the lace. And then it all kind of like, once we had these discussions and these meetings at Michael Miller, it sort of clicked into this theme of boudoir or your beautiful grandmother's vanity. <laughs> so it all kind of came together. And I think it doesn't really, at least for me, I've never said like, I want to do a boudoir collection and this is the inspiration and now I'm going to make fabrics fit to fit that theme. It's more that I have ideas of things that I want to do and then I see these sort of um, similarities and sort of like the cohesion or the theme starts to come out once you start talking about the ideas. So that's how it's always been for me. And um, I just really like collaborating with Michael Miller because they've always really helped me put those ideas into themes and into collections. Thank you. That's a wonderful question. <laughs> and Sandy wants to know, are any of these cottons a team? No, they are all 100% quilting cottons. Okay. 
they feel a lot like poplin to me. Not a lot, but I mean, they have that sort of, they have sort of like a crisper drape to them, but um, once you wash them, they soften up a little bit. So yeah, they're like a 100% cotton, quilting cotton, kind of similar to a broadcloth or kind of bordering on a, a poplin. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's all the questions all so right. far. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. And um, thank you for joining the live feed today. And thank you for following along with my posts. And thank you, Michael Miller, for being an amazing partner um, in my fabric collections and for letting me take over today. It's been really fun. And thank you, Malisha, for doing such an amazing job. Anytime. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And thank you, Hattie. You're very beautiful. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.